Hey, God Invented Music, I thought I would do a more personal response to this because, you know, I think that you deserve more personal responses and not just little text things, because there's a, more of a limit to the words I can use on the text things. So I'm going to be responding to your point, to your post point by point, and so here it goes. In order to get rid of an idea, you have to get rid of the person that believes in that idea. Kind of like how they killed everyone who thought the earth was flat? No, you don't have to kill the person, you just have to change everybody's mind. Does, did they kill everybody who believed in Zeus? No, well, they may have, <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, no, that's wrong. Because if you tell us, even if it, beca if it, if it, if it becomes the law that there, you can't be Christian in the United States, that's not going to stop us. You guys are not going to get rid of Christians. Well, the Constitution guarantees freedom of religion, so it can't become the law that no one can be Christians. And once again, it's not the Christians we want to get rid of, it's the Christianity. Let's take a look at some of this persecutions overall, all around the world. Let's look at some of the news of persecution websites. I wonder if these websites are made by Christians. Um, it says Egypt court bans Christian on ex-Muslims ID card. For a second time, an Egyptian court has rejected a Christian's convert's request to change his religion affiliation. Darn atheists, taking away their right to change their religion. Oh wait, that's Muslims doing that. On his identity card. No. Other than violence, a persecution is taking away your rights. Kind of like the right to get married? Of course. Um, but let's look at violence, shall we? Let's see. Somali Islamists behead Christian's leader's young sons. And if you look, if you Google Christian persecution and you go to images, you'll see a couple be beheaded people. Um, why? Because they are told to either deny Christ or we will cut your head off, or deny Christ or we will rape you or such and stuff. Christian persecution, and you'll find plenty of interesting stuff right there. Now just because your religion, or that you are persecuted because of your religion, does not mean that your beliefs are based on reality, or that they are correct. You know, if I say the flying spaghetti monster is real and you punch me in the face for it, that doesn't prove the, spag the flying spaghetti monster is real. It says, Islamic extremists have beheaded two young boys in Somalia because their Christian father refused to give information about a church leader. And the killers are searching Kenya's refugee camps to do the same to the other boy's father. What do you guys think about that? You see, take it all in, absorb it into your minds, and tell me what you guys think about that. I think that Muslims, at least those Muslims, are very insecure in their beliefs if they think that Christianity is such a, such a threat to, to them, to their way of life. And, you know, it's terrible what people will do in the name of their God. But it's no different from the Crusades or the, the, the Inquisition. You know, it's just violence in the name of a different god. I mean, right here, we're, you guys are fighting for your rights. Um, I'm going to say this for the gays. Like I have said, I have nothing against you gays. I think you guys have the right to do whatever you want. But um, I think it's a little bit, just a little bit selfish that you're fighting so hard for certain rights. Yes, it's selfish to fight for your rights. How dare you? When in the other part of the world, so many people are dying because they don't have the rights to praise the God that they desire to worship. So what are they supposed to do? Oh, well, we don't have equal rights. But hey, people are being killed in other countries. We should just be happy. 
No, you shouldn't just be content with unequal rights just because other people have it worse. Just because there's worse out there doesn't mean you don't have it bad. So how are you guys persecuting us? Maybe not by violence, by by emotional harassment or stuff like that. So, and then you might say, oh my gosh, but Maritza, you guys are harassing us too by saying that we're going to go to hell. You guys, that we're going to go to hell. Um, okay, why would that even bother you? First of all, first of all, I'm a strong believer that no Christian has a, deserves the right to tell anybody that they're going to hell because you're not worthy of that. You are sinners yourself, so don't judge people, Christians, all right? Second of all, if you guys don't believe in hell, why does that worry you, why does that worry you so much? Why does it offend you so much that we're, that certain Christians are telling you that you're going to hell if you don't even believe in the hell? It's not your belief that we're going to hell that bothers us. It's the fact that you use it as a justification to do whatever you have to do in order to keep people from going there. You know, trying to put your morality into our laws all for the all-important goal of going to heaven. Like, saving other people's souls is going to get you into heaven any more surely. And maybe you sincerely believe that we're going to hell, and you sincerely don't want us to. I mean, that's nice of you, but... There's just... There's just no evidence, and there's no way that we're going to believe it. The only reason to believe in it is faith, and faith is belief without evidence. So you're admitting there's no evidence, and that you have no reason to believe it, and yet you believe it anyway. Now this kind of goes into what I think of faith, which I'll do in a separate video, but um, there we go, That's uh, there's your response.